okay now? Thank you very much. My name is Kate Marshall. I'm your state treasurer. I handle the state's cash, the state's investments, the state's debts, college savings, and unclaimed property. As of Friday, you had $426 million in the bank. That is, for the last four months, it has been trending upward. So I am kind of cautiously optimistic. In 2007, you had a billion dollars in the bank, so you, had, you need to take that <laughs> optimism with a little bit of a caution. Um, I enjoy very much being state treasurer. It has been a challenge during this global fiscal crisis, but I'd like to report that every single year I have shown net gains. In the year that we had the financial meltdown, I beat Warren Buffett. <laughs> I have returned three times as much unclaimed property as my predecessor to the people of Nevada. I have increased the types of college saving plans we have in this state for Nevadans and lowered the cost for Nevadans to save for college. I have managed the cash and every single time that the state has been put into a special session, I have found the funding, created a line of credit and helped them bridge the gap so that they could get to a regular session where they could spend the time to deliberate and have a little more thought to what they're doing to match their revenues and their expenditures. I have maintained the state's credit rating, and in fact, as of April 15th, the credit rating is going up. Thank you very much. My name's Steve Martin, and I am also running for state treasurer. I am a certified public accountant, certified fraud examiner, and I have a master's degree in accounting. I live here in Las Vegas at this time. I am also the former state controller. I was appointed in 2006 when Kathy Augustine was murdered. I finished her term as state controller. As I said, uh, I have a master's degree in accounting, and one of the things that I like to point out, if you're going to go to court, you would hire a lawyer. If you're looking for somebody to manage your money, you hire a CPA or somebody with a financial background. I'm a former Marine with 10 years active duty, two years in the reserve. You learn leadership in the Marine Corps. However, in the state treasurer's office, leadership doesn't go too far if you don't have a financial background. I made a lot of changes in the state controller's office in the short time I was state controller. And I think there are plenty of things that we can do in the state treasurer's office as well to correct some of the uh, problems that currently exist. Dr. Richard Hawkins, economics professor and attorney. We're obviously in a wretched economic situation at the moment. Um, what, if anything, with the, in the treasurer's office can be done that can help the state economy in the long term or influence it in the long term? Well, I can talk to you about what I've done so far and then what I plan to do in the future. So the first thing that happens when you have a state fiscal crisis is expense requirements go up. Unemployment is up in the state, and so the state has more requirements to serve the unemployed. Medicare and Medicaid requirements go up, and so the state has more federal requirements to serve those. The school districts do not have the same amount of money coming in, and under our Constitution, we are required to fund where they cannot. So as a result, one of the challenges is trying to manage, manage the cash balances in a way that do not put the state in a fiscal strait. And one of the ways I have done that is started to pay things that were previously paid quarterly on a month-to-month -month basis. The other thing that I have done is I have been very, very conservative in our investments, in part because we only have $426 million. You must keep much of that cash liquid, so you can't go out in any very many long-term investments. 
I should point out that uh, I do have a handful of certified public accountants working for me in the office, but much of the job does not require that skill, and in fact that skill is really regulated to the controller's office, and there is a real separation of powers there. The state treasurer's office is really much more financial management, not after the fact accounting, and does not require the accounting background except in cash management. Investments is really quite a different animal. College savings, unclaimed property, and debt, quite different animals, and you look for different experiences. Much more economics background, which I have. Um, last session, I brought a bill that would allow me to put state money in CDs and banks with the requirement that they lend the same amount of money out to small businesses that were Nevada businesses that hired Nevada employees. The governor vetoed that bill, and I have talked with leadership, we will be bringing that bill back again. It has been done in other states with great results, uh, creating more jobs, allowing a big problem we have in the state right now, small businesses cannot get access to money, and therefore cannot grow uh, their businesses and lower our unemployment rate. That's another thing that I plan on doing. The third thing is to continue to make sure the Millennium Scholarship is available, and to continue to make sure that it is affordable to save for college. Because you know and I know that unless you have the education in the workforce, you don't get the businesses that will give you the jobs. Thank you. Since you asked specifically uh, what in the treasurer's office could we do, I can give you a lot of other ideas uh, with regards to other issues, but let's start with the treasurer's office first. As an example, the, in the Legislative Council Bureau audit just came out on the Treasurer's Office with regards to unclaimed property. In that report, it stated that the Treasurer's Office had failed to audit more than 50% of the companies that they should have been auditing. If you use that as a, as a base, in fiscal year 09, the state transferred $50 million to the general fund from unclaimed property my assumption is then if we were to have done all the audits, perhaps we could have transferred an additional $50 million to the general fund. Uh, it also cited that there were at least nine states that they had contacted that had additional measures and additional ways of trying to identify unclaimed property. None of those items were addressed or have been addressed by the state of Nevada. With regards to, say, some other issues that I think the Treasurer can also have input to, as an indicated, uh, the SAGE report which came out gave a number of different recommendations which I think the tre Treasurer can weigh in on, as, for instance, the process that we do the budget within the state. In the past, what we usually do is start where you left off, so that, in that encourages everyone to spend all the money that they have give them a little bit of an increase, and that's the new budget, and we work that way. Rather than going back to, say, a zero-based budget, or looking at the programs and see if they're still viable. As controller, I would see the amount of money that was spent in the last 60 days of a fiscal year was just absolutely amazing, and a lot of it was spent on needless items, paper, uh, computers that they never ended up using, different things like that, you see that. The other things that we can do within the state are to identify programs that can be enhanced. As an example, the Medicaid program, there was actually a survey by the GAO, and in 2006 they indicated that the state of Nevada left $250 million on the table with regards to Medicaid payments that the state paid out that were not, that should have been collected. 13, between 13 and 20 percent of the people who have Medicaid claims that come to a hospital don't end up paying the bill or their insurance company doesn't end up paying the bill. Since Nevada pays 50% of that amount of money, that's a hundred thousand, or excuse me, a hundred million dollars that we potentially could have put back or not had to pay out of the general fund. I think that's what the treasurer has to do, not only as the, uh, the functions within your office, but you're a good ear for the governor to listen to. You're a good ear for the legislature to listen to. And I have friends on both sides of the aisle that I would talk to on a regular basis during session. Thank you. 